Alright, uh, so I was scrolling through some of these political YouTube uh, commentators and just kind of seeing what they're, you know, what they're thinking about, what they're talking about, what they're seeing, and then, you know, wanting to look at the Democratic debate for myself to kind of see what the candidates are doing. And I gotta be honest with y'all, man. I said it before and I'm really, really feeling it now. I'm just not feeling too good about uh, the chances of the Democrats actually winning. All right, so the four main people since uh, Senator Kamala Harris dropped out, and all right, I'm gonna get to the four real quick. You see, I do this, don't I? Like, I, I start with something, but I go, anyways. All right, so look, I know a lot of people are gonna try to blame the fact that America is so called not ready for a female, and especially a black female, when it comes to president, and that may be true. America might not be ready. I damn sure am. I think it's been past time. But anyways, it's not just about me. It's about America. But I don't think that was Kamala's issue. Or I'm like, my bad. Senator Kamala's issue. I'm going to try to give people the respect they deserve. Um, I think that it was a, a laundry list of other things. Um, Alright, just as black folks, we don't have a good record when it comes to to prosecutors and the justice system and stuff like that and her being a smug condescending arrogant prosecutorial background type of person it didn't really fit well it didn't seem like uh, you've kind of participated in this thing that we're trying to dismantle and re-erect and you know she was late on the legalization of marijuana and the way that she did it just like just laughing about this shit and i don't know man she had the chance to prosecute Steve Mnuchin and she still hasn't answered for that, you know, I just, I don't know, I, I don't think that she was the best black female candidate and I don't think we need to use identity politics when it comes to that. So I, I want to say she ran a good race. I don't like that she had to run to South Carolina to try to pander to a whole bunch of black uh, voters or whatnot because she thought that they couldn't think for themselves, like they can think for themselves too. But it is what it is. Back to the four. All right, so. We got old Booty Judge, which I do not get at all. Aside from the fact that he's supposed to be this fresh-faced, old-school Democrat. That's basically all he is. He's like Clinton 2.0. He's like Obama 2.0. He's got the same centrist bullshit, pandering-ass thing that he wants to do. He wants to tell you the, the left can't do these things, but the left can do this. It can't be in the middle, but the middle is no longer in the middle. The middle is to the right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you keep compromising with them on the right, then you're only moving to the right. You're not moving to the center. And that's all we've been doing. Because Obama was center, and all he did was move to the right. So we're trying to get a little bit back over here, at least to the center, and then move to the left. That'd be our dream. But we can't get to that point until we understand where we're actually currently at. So, with him trying to go to this point of, you know, we can't have this type of Medicare, we can't have this type of college free, this, that, and the other. But, I mean, we can. He just doesn't think that we should because he's also beholden to certain types of interests. So, if you've seen that video circulate and, and the people have asked him, like, yo, you know, is it time that you, you know, let us into your fundraisers, let us know what's going on? Uh, and if you think that it's bad that big money's in here, you know, you, don't you think you should probably stop taking, you know, money from big money motherfuckers? And he's like, uh, no. Uh, no. Okay, and like just that smug arrogance, like that just elitist, acad I don't want to say academic, I'm, I'm with the academia, but it's like you, you hold this type of mantle about yourself, like you just the shit because you have this background. And it's like, right, like you, you're really a bum. Like you're a small town mayor who, well, okay, not small town, but you're, you're like this, you're Mayor Pete. And when you got on the big stage and we got a chance to actually see you, like, you don't have it. You're not that well-versed on the politics. You're really up there to kind of distract and to keep the three that I'm about to talk about up top and everybody else to the, you know, to the side and stuff like that. That's why you're getting a lot of coverage and they're not talking about the candidates that are actually really worth a fuck. Like my boy, yay! And I don't understand this, this hatred for Tulsi, but... You know, aside from that, um, it's like there's other people that are like actually kind of cool that deserve to at least speak, you know, but they're not even getting that chance because there's so much attention on old Mayor Pete. And I just uh, I'm sick of that shit because I just don't think that he's really good representation for moving forward. I think he's the same old bullshit that we've been doing. And then speaking of the same old bullshit we've been doing, that's got to be old Biden. And he seems so mentally incompetent at this point, y'all. And I know that that might sound um, 
sound okay boomerish, like, you know, like an insult, like, because he's so old. But no, it's not about, about being old. It's about being out of touch. He is completely out of touch because he still has this mindset of when he used to do things. And you can tell because he keeps bringing back old stories to try to make us remember who he was because he can't remember who the hell he is. So I, I, I don't think it's Joe's time now. I don't think it was ever Joe's time. And I think we need to move forward and stop trying to allow Joe Biden to weasel his way into office just because he's a familiar face. Uncle Joe need to get the fuck on. Which brings me to the other two. And you know what? It looks like it's gonna come down to these two. And, like I said, open-minded productions and controversial conversation will not endorse anybody, but it's pretty obvious who I do endorse myself as Jizzle the Joester, as Michael Christopher Jones. I endorse Bernie Sanders. I am not a Bernie bro. I'm not Bernie or bus. I will go for whoever will get the fucking orange Cheeto bastard out of office. But if we're being honest right now, Bernie is who I will throw my support behind. Bernie is who I believe has the best position. And Bernie is who I believe is the most consistent and authentic. And, well, when it comes to my ideals, he seems to share pretty much most of them. So I rock with that. And um, not to say that Elizabeth Warren uh, or Senator Warren is not a viable or good candidate. And if she gets the nomination, best believe I'm going to be at my polling place putting her name down. I'm just letting y'all know because, honestly, there's no third party person that's going to have enough of a chance. The independents ain't going to do it. And right now, this is what we got, y'all. And I know it sucks, but it's what we got. So y'all don't do what we did in 2016, y'all. Please don't do what we did in 2016 and not come out and vote. Remember that go to know your poll and go to vote campaign that we're starting? Yes, yes, we're still working on it. Yeah, I'm gonna keep bringing it up. I know I've been gone for a while, but yes, please get out, vote, get out, vote, vote, just vote, go fucking vote. Like, just do it, all right? Because we can't continue what we're doing. There's things that are eventually going to break. They have been bending for a long time and this man has bent and bent and bent. Please, y'all, we cannot break.